Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming news channel brave enough to say that Cyberpunk is good. I love it every time. The bravery just swells up within. But it seems like the rest of the world is catching up to our bravery, though, since the game saw a sales boost after its current gen update which CD Projekt released back in February. That's right, they are catching up, Lawrence. Thank you for saying that. You are so brave. That is all the good news there for the sales. The bad news is most of the script for the game's first major expansion, which is supposed to release in 2023, leaked onto Reddit, apparently because of a Discord drama spillover, which is really weird. The internet can be a wild place when it gets real serious, real life stuff. We've looked over the leaks and they do appear legit, although that obviously means they're the biggest, fattest spoilers you can imagine. Because of that, we'll quickly cover the sales bump first and then get to the more spoilery content later. On that note, CD Projekt made a just a big chunk of cash. Uh, at least that's a takeaway from their Q1 2022 financial results video, which published on their Investor Relations YouTube channel on May 26th. They made 216 million zloty in revenue, to be exact, the bulk of which is attributable to a cyberpunk sales bump following their current gen update. They cleared 69 million zloty in profit, which is twice as much as the same quarter last year. Nice. That's actually about 16 million dollars uh, in, in US. That's, that's solid. That's really solid for uh, Q1 there. Other updates were kind of sparse. They're still planning on another update pass for Cyberpunk. Uh, the Cyberpunk anime Edge Runners is coming in the second half of 2022. And the current gen update for The Witcher 3 is expected to launch in Q4 of this year as well. Cyberpunk sales are an interesting topic though, because CD Projekt's last game, The Witcher 3, continued to sell for years and years after its initial release. That's atypical in the games industry, so many are wondering if CD Projekt can get the same long tail sales out of Cyberpunk, especially given its launch. Yeah, I mean, so far, so good. That is exactly what it is doing. Uh, last time we heard in April 2022, Cyberpunk sold 18 million units. That's video games to all you people out there. <laughs> uh, naturally, most of those moved in the game's launch window, uh, with CD Projekt announcing 13 million copies sold in December of 2020. So in the year and a half from then to now, they've sold 5 million. I mean, honestly, that's pretty good. Uh, the question is, how many of those were recent sales? Yeah, who knows? Maybe they were all fire sale prices, $2 for copy Cyberpunk? Who's to say? Well, we are. You know, we didn't go to Clown Math College just to sit on our hands when we have some revenue figures staring us in the face. So let's crunch some numbers and see if we can't estimate how many units Cyberpunk 2077 sold in Q1 2022. Put it in quotes here, crunch some numbers. Because I mean, you know, they're kind of fake. Converted to USD, uh, CD Projekt made 50.6 million dollars, US dollars in revenue in Q1 of 2022. CD Projekt says a bulk of that figure is Cyberpunk sales. So let's honk our clown noses a bit, say 70% is a bulk. That means CD Projekt made $35.4 million in US in revenue off of Cyberpunk. That is the bulk. All right, good bulk, solid bulk to land. Here's where it gets a little clownier. The game currently has a different price on every platform in the US region due to sales right now. It's $30 on Xbox, $25 on PlayStation Network, $60 on Steam. You know what, whatever. You know, it's clown math time. Let's put on a rainbow wig and just say that due to store revenue splits, CD Projekt gets 70% of an average $30 price for the game. So let's say that they get $21 per unit sale. I think you're being pretty, pretty safe there. $30 on, on average? I mean, it's probably more like 40 or 50, but. These days, I bet it's probably less. They've been, they've been, it's been pretty cheap. It's been pretty cheap. But that only means they've sold more units rather than less to fit the revenue, so. True, that's true. If we're going for units sold, angling high actually means the units are gonna be lower than maybe they actually are. That's a great point. So $35.4 million in revenue divided by $21 per unit equals 1.685 million copies sold in Q1 of 2022. Aha! You've done it, Bruce. I mean, that doesn't really feel like a smoking gun, but it's, you know, we also just made it up. There's that. In general though, one and a half year old games do not get sales spikes of a million plus units, especially if they're story-driven, uh, you know, single player games. Those usually just evaporate month after release. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy, hopefully it's still selling, but it's probably not. Yeah, we're used to talking about the Skyrims and the GTAs and, and the Witchers and things like that, but we don't ever talk about all the other single player games that come out and then disappear. So it's, I mean, you know, Cyberpunk's doing pretty, pretty, pretty well. The only other game that kind of really behaved this way was again, CD Projekt's previous game, The Witcher 3, uh, which is just a phenomenon. It continued to sell and sell and sell every single year, uh, eventually hitting 40 million units 
and ranking in at the 14th best selling game of all time. Well deserved, right behind Pac-Man. So we'll see what happens. Moving a million plus units in a quarter, in a recent quarter, indicates that CD Projekt is succeeding in finding those long tail sales for Cyberpunk. And this is before the game's first expansion and inevitable, you know, ultra cyber hacked edition that comes out once all the DLCs are out. So, it, you know, it's the game of the year thing. So if Cyberpunk goes on to get 40 and 50 million unit sales over its lifetime, then CD Projekt might be the only developer, aside from Rockstar Games, who can actually make these big narrative focused games hugely profitable. Also, we should talk about Sony games, the first party Sony games that come out, because those- That's a really good point, Bruce, yeah. Yeah, th those make some, some pretty good numbers too, but those are Sony first party exclusives, kind of a little different than these cross-platform phenomenons like The Witcher and Cyberpunk and GTA. But either way, Sony absolutely blows it out of the park on those exclusives. Uh, and again, this is all kind of looking over the next few years for Cyberpunk. We got some waiting to do in the meantime, see what happens. You know, we don't have to wait that long because we got some leaks, baby, woo! Don't worry, we're getting into that portion of the story, but we're gonna make it really loud and very obvious when we're actually going to talk about spoilers. So if you don't want anything ruined, don't worry, we'll tell you when to stop watching and make it very obvious. The context of these leaks deserves some mention before we get into the leaks themselves. Uh, Reddit user RomulusUT3, there's a lot of drama here, get ready. Reddit user RomulusUT3 posted, quote, the thread I wish I didn't have to make, the expansion storyline, uh, to two cyberpunk subreddits a few minutes apart on May 25th. While both subreddits have since deleted the contents of these posts, they reportedly contained a full dump of scripts in progress for the first Cyberpunk DLC expansion. Yeah, the community's reactions to these posts were not at all positive. Not really because Romulus was just spoiling the game, which they weren't super happy about, but mostly because these posts appear to be part of a larger story in which Romulus is punitively leaking this information and retribution for something. One member accuses Romulus of posting the leaks to, quote, take revenge on the entire development team over personal problems on one of the discords due to the conditions prevailing there and the inadequate attitude of the moderation staff associated with CDPR. In response, Romulus writes that they are, quote, taking a stance against mistreating people, double standards, and frat boy culture, though other posts from Romulus make their motivations sound more personal, writing, quote, if you allow someone to be treated like dirt for nearly two years, don't be shocked if that dirt one day turns into a stone and ends up smashing into your face. <laughs> what a poet. <laughs> Man. Yeah, but but again, it, it makes his claims that he's not doing it out of retribution a little hollow when he says stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that's totally valid. So we don't know really what's going on, so I, you can make your own judgments here because uh, we kind of don't have any clue. I didn't want to say it was all this stuff, but boy, does it kind of read like somebody got banned from a Discord and they're real salty about it. And they had a position of authority, so now they're... Now they're using it. Okay, all right, uh, it's time. Now is the time for that spoiler warning we told you about. We're not gonna dig into every last line of dialogue because there's obviously a lot there, but we will discuss some of the higher level plot points, speculate about what a, some of the script could mean. So to, if you don't want to hear any of that, and I kind of don't, so I understand, uh, just mute us and switch to another tab or something. Give us that sweet YouTube watch time though. We need that. Nom, 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 nom. Stick around, but mute it because there's spoilers coming up. All right. Now, it's time for Inside Games <gasps> After Dark. Ooh, yeah. So the leak file itself, it's a zip file with a ton of plain text documents in it. Actually, it's a seven zip file, so very classy. Some of them are scripts referring to game resources, Jason's script, but most of it, the bulk of it, are just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of unattributed script lines. The folder structure of the leak implies there will be seven story missions uh, with several new fixer missions, mini world stories, world encounters, and street stories kind of added on top. Uh, most of the main story dialogue is present, though a lot of the side mission stuff is uh, a, like a placeholder sort of. Yeah, lines saying what the line will say, not actual t dialogue though, like this person is saying this, this person's saying this now, kind of makes sense. The early dialogue establishes a few basics. You're still playing as V and you still have the relic with Johnny Silverhand's engram on it, so it seems to happen before the end of Cyberpunk 2077, again, depending on what ending you got. Uh, v gets a mysterious call from someone telling them to go to the combat zone. <laughs> I love it. Uh, anyway, this is a previously inaccessible area in Night City. Once there, the mystery caller reveals themselves to be Songbird, a character whose model was previously data mined in December 2021. Songbird appears to tinker with the relic in a way that silences Johnny Silverhand, or Keanu Reeves, uh, implying that they kind of had to get rid of Keanu Reeves' performance 
uh, with some sort of writing conceit. But it makes sense, right? They can't hire him for every single DLC. I get it. Uh, Reddit users indicate that Silverhand does actually have new scripted lines. So hopefully he hasn't been written completely out of future content. But uh, I, again, I, I understand. He's very expensive. He's a movie star. I mean, we can't be that far away from it, right? Of like just having a voice actor put down enough dialogue so that an AI knows how to talk like them. And then you just sign away that. I don't know. I'm sure they're there now, but that would be bad. Don't do that. As far as the combat zone goes, it's a goofy name for a particularly lawless part of Night City. It's a walled off no man's land inside of Pacifica, which itself has already been abandoned by Night City police to the local rule of the voodoo boys. It's kind of hardly mentioned in cyberpunk. Uh, there's a few data shards from the perspective of a scavenger that goes into the combat zone and then dies shortly after being shot by a quote general Whoever that is, we, we actually don't know. Yeah, maybe we'll run into them in the DLC. Some dude calls them something, who knows. The World of Cyberpunk 2077 art book also briefly mentions the combat zone, but mostly in detailing the history that led to it being contained in abandoned territory. I mean, it does sound like a cool place for a clandestine meeting. There are tons more details and plot bits, obviously, but we didn't read them. I don't want to be spoiled. Lawrence doesn't want to be spoiled. We don't want that. So we can spoil a little bit, but not all of it. So if you want the entire, the full business, Feel free to follow through the links to our sources that are in the description for this video. Be warned! Spoilers! Yeah, mostly I was just curious if it was going to be V, if Johnny Silverhand was going to be back, just for the logistics of having to rehire Reeves to, to shoot new lines. So it sounds like it is the most logistically probable outcome, which is that they have him on contract for like two more hours of VO. So they had to squeeze it all into a couple of lines just to prove they still got him. And then, yeah, the rest of the time, he's just been cyber muted for some reason. So they can they can do all the performance capture they want. They just don't have his voice. We are uh, nerding out about Cyberpunk because both Lawrence and I have played this game to completion and played uh, hundreds of hours of it. Um, and I love it. Uh, so I can't wait. I can't wait for the DLC. I can't wait to dive back in. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they have planned. Uh, but before that, I want to establish a new a new system here, a new a new uh, program. I want to I want to recognize the inside games, inside gamers out there on the internet. So I've actually seen this happen a few times now. Uh, every time I've wanted to put it in an episode, but I never did until now. But it happened enough times, Bruce, that I decided it was time to celebrate these heroes. So there's been a couple of times where if I'm digging through like threads or weird forums, Discord chat logs or whatever for a story, I'll run into a true hero. Somebody that is really upset that this shit is happening in their community because people like me are gonna come trawling along to make a YouTube video about it. Um, now, I'd like to think we do a better job than most YouTubers, but still, we gotta give it up for somebody roasting the shit out of YouTube games media, because I love doing that. So without further ado, Revenge, you are today's Inside Games Inside Gamer for this wonderful comment. If you didn't want to write such a thread, then perhaps you shouldn't have. Don't get me wrong, there's absolutely no excuse for online bullying or treating other people badly, especially if they're fans of the franchise, under which is umbrella you operate. But I've got the sneaking feeling that this will do more damage to Cyberpunk 2077 than it will be an act of schooling to the rude moderators that you can only push a person so far. What do I mean by that? I can already see the YouTube thumbnails with a shocked V and a loud, bold font. Cyberpunk expansion leaked. Fans are disappointed. CPDR does it again. That sort of thing. Which you know generate controversy and clickbait of YouTubers are eager to eat up, paraphrase, for 10 minutes so I can get those mid-rolls. I know you have good intentions in heart, but I can't help but wonder where this will lead down the line. Revenge, you've nailed it. Thank you for acknowledging our work. But before we go, uh, we have some patrons that we'd like to thank that spoil us. Not with plot details, but with support. Kyle Abbott, Spirit Bear, and Everyday Brian, Connor Maturin, and Scotty Ryan. Thank you all very much. I got some patrons I like way more than Pan Am. Wait a minute, hold on, that's a lie. But I like them almost as much as Pan Am. Kyle Ellis, uh, Maurice Thompson, Docs360, UESC Battleroid, and Jay Embers87. Thank you very much. You're not Pan Am, but you're very, very, very close.